What is up guys, my name is Fran and this is my brand new 2021 Tesla Model Y. And in today's video, I'm gonna tell you guys what I like about this car, what I dislike about this car, but most importantly, things I wish I knew before I bought a Tesla. But before we begin this video, as always, my name is Fran and here on the channel, I make videos all about technology. I do reviews, I do opinion pieces, and sometimes I check out cool cars like this Tesla Model Y. So if you like what you've seen in today's video thus far, and it's your first time to the channel, consider subscribing. So let's start off with the question, why? Why did I buy Tesla in the first place? Well, Tesla is a forward-thinking technology company, and I like to think of myself as a forward-thinking technology kind of guy. I guess that kind of explains it. You see, this vehicle is packed full of innovative and advanced technology. And I'm not just talking about the full self-driving or the large touchscreen, which is kind of what Tesla's known for. I'm also talking about the fully flushed out and functional car operating system, security and monitoring tools, as well as a technology-driven safety features, just to name a few. But while all this advanced technology is nice to have in a car, what's it actually like owning and driving it every single day? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. So as I said in my intro, there are a ton of things that I both like and dislike about the Tesla Model Y. And at the risk of sounding like a cynic, let's at least start off this video on a positive note and talk about some of the good things that I like about the Tesla Model Y. All right, so the first thing that I like about the Tesla Model Y is the design. Now, of course, it's very opinionated and your mileage may vary, but for me, I actually really like the vehicle. It has a lot of swoops and curves, and it definitely seems very aerodynamic and sporty, even though it happens to be a four-door saloon. The low riding position and the beautiful headlights paired up with the induction wheels, which is an upgrade that my model has, as well as the swoop back, just overall makes for a beautiful package. All right, so the next good thing that I wanna talk about when it comes to this Tesla Model Y is gonna be the driving experience. Now here I have mixed opinions, but as promised, I'm gonna stick with the positive ones. And the thing that I really like about the driving experience is actually gonna be the acceleration and the motor power. All right, so let me tell you guys, my version of the 2021 Model Y is simply just a long range dual motor. It's not even the performance version. And I've gotta say, the performance that comes out of this vehicle is absolutely insane. This is one of those things that Tesla owners and people that have test driven Teslas in the past always talk about, but there's this gut wrenching feeling of acceleration that just keeps coming and coming and it doesn't really fall off until it reaches top speed and it's actually pretty insane when you actually drive the vehicle my car that i had before this one the one that i replaced the tesla with was actually a bmw x3 m series now that was a really fast car it had around 400 horsepower and i've got to say this bad boy right here this thing is much faster. Oh, and believe it or not, this car can get even faster. Within the application for an additional $2,000, you can unlock this vehicle from going from zero to 60 in 4.9 seconds down to 4.2 seconds. Another thing that I really like about this car is the cabin space. So I'm about six foot two and I can sit very comfortably. I've got a lot of space in front of me and I've got plenty of leg room, even if I'm sitting over in the passenger seat, but I'm gonna go ahead and hop in the back and I'm gonna go ahead and hop back here. And as you guys can see, I have plenty of headroom still, I've got plenty of knee room. I can be very comfortable right here in the back seat. There's also plenty of trunk space, a subfloor, as well as a frunk in case I need to store anything inside of my car. And then of course, there's my favorite thing about this vehicle, and that is gonna be all the Tesla technology. Now this could be its own video in and of itself, so I'll try to keep this short and sweet. So first, there's the entire Tesla infotainment system, which I feel is just as robust as something like Apple's iOS or Microsoft's Windows 10. It's just a wonderful platform, and it pretty much has everything that you need within it to operate your vehicle. So within the Tesla infotainment system, you're gonna find a bunch of really cool features. It's gonna give you the ability to do things such as watch Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, and even browse the internet and play a couple of games. And because you do have access to the internet browser, I have heard of a bunch of people using uh, cloud gaming systems such as Google Stadia to actually play full-fledged AAA titles in their Tesla. You also have access to a pretty robust mapping system, which of course is gonna allow you to navigate to your destination, but also does some really cool other things such as give you traffic information and also show you landmarks such as places to eat and of course supercharging stations. This mapping system also can be controlled by voice command, which is another feature in the infotainment system, a voice command system that actually works. As far as audio entertainment goes, it does have a Spotify application built into the car directly, so you do have the ability to listen to your music as well as podcasts, but you also have the option of hooking up your smartphone and streaming audio off of there. And then of course, because my Tesla came standard with a number of cameras, I'm also gonna have a built-in dash cam, sentry mode, as well as Tesla's full self-driving. All right, so now it's time to talk about the things that I dislike, or dare I say even hate, about my Tesla Model Y. 
So kicking things off with the things that I dislike about my Tesla Model Y is the minimalistic interior design. Now this is actually gonna cover a number of things that I don't like about this vehicle, but this is this overall minimalistic design element of the interior that just takes away from a lot of the features you're used to on a more traditional vehicle. So starting off with our instrument cluster, generally you you know have an instrument cluster in a traditional vehicle, and as you're driving along, you keep your eyes on the road, you glance down to look at your speed, but in the Model Y, you have to look at this at your actual center console. Now, of course, it's a big, beautiful console. I believe it's around 11 or 13 inches. But the point is you have to take your eyes off the road to look down here to actually see how fast you're going, uh, what gear you're in, pretty much anything like that. And this is actually indicative of anything you have to do in the vehicle. You need to open the glove box. You have to go down here. If you need to make an adjustment to your volume, uh, you actually have to go down here as well. Adjust your air conditioning. You have to go down here. Now, of course, some of these controls are built into the steering wheel, which is very convenient, like switching tracks, changing volume, uh, adjusting your autopilot, all of that's done here. But for the most part, everything else uh, is actually done here in the center console. And that can actually be very distracting and somewhat even dangerous. There are also some other minimalistic design elements that just really kind of get to me. Like for example, as I just mentioned, your air conditioning, you do have to go down to the console to adjust how powerful it is, if it's uh, where it's actually blowing. And once again, it's very distracting, but it's also fairly difficult to do when you're sort of at highway speeds and trying to make adjustments. Uh, you also have things like, for example, the lack of an adjustable uh, I don't even know what this thing is, the headrest inside of your vehicle, that's actually back there. You, you can't actually make an adjustment. Uh, getting out of the vehicle, you have to press a button as opposed to a traditional lever or latch. I think there was too much trying to be different and sacrificing some of the quality of life controls that you generally would have inside of a more traditional vehicle, which I think just for the sake of being different wasn't worth it. So while we're still talking about the interior, there are two other things that I greatly dislike about this vehicle that made it onto my list. So number one has to do with this moonroof. Now, of course, it's a nice, beautiful moonroof, and I can even see in the camera angle, you can see the nice blue sky and some of the clouds, and it's really nice to look at, but it comes with two major downfalls and not a lot of people talk about. So number one, the moonroof itself during the hot summer months actually turns this vehicle into basically a greenhouse. So it gets really, really hot in here, and of course, at that point, you have to crank up the air conditioner, which then in turn takes away from some of your range. But also when sitting in traffic, I've been in situations where the sun beams down directly and it actually can burn your scalp. And I've been in that situation. I actually had to get a cover for this top of this vehicle to make it not too hot in this vehicle for me and my family. Now the other downfall about this moonroof also has to do with the fact that it swoops all the way to the back of the vehicle. And since Tesla did not decide to actually put a bridge down the middle, you actually don't have any floodlights here in the middle of the vehicle. Now it's probably not something you notice and it might be a little bit petty, but in the nighttime, even with some of the ambient lighting that is around the vehicle, if you maybe drop something like your keys or your phone, it's really difficult to see. And the floodlights that are on the side of the vehicle and in the front just don't really uh, produce enough light for you to actually see what you're doing. And the second thing that I dislike about this interior, which technically has to do with the design of the car altogether, is actually that really small rear view window. Now, it makes things really hard to see, especially at nighttime, and most of the time I end up just relying on my side mirrors, but I'd really like to have a bigger rear window. There's also a couple of other things that I don't like that made it onto my list that I don't really want to go into detail with, so I'll do a quick lightning round. So number one, the fact that the moonroof doesn't actually open and it's just more of just a piece of glass. The interior quality is kind of crappy, especially for how much this vehicle costs. The suspension is locked in, it's not air suspension, so it makes for a really rough ride. The Bluetooth on the phone, when somebody calls you on the vehicle, the audio doesn't dim, it just kind of sounds like it's background noise in your actual song you're listening to. And then the pre-collision sensor is terrible in this vehicle. It goes off and fires off when there's nothing in front of you. Uh, it's just really bad. I don't understand how people trust this with full self-driving. But now let's talk about the thing that I dislike the most about this vehicle, and that's gonna be its electric range. So according to Tesla, my 2021 Tesla Model Y Long Range Edition has an average range of about 318 miles to a charge. Now, in reality, I'm getting much, much less, somewhere in the neighborhood of around 240 miles to a full charge. But that's not the full story. You see, Tesla recommends that you only charge your vehicle up to anywhere from 80 to 90% to get that full 240 mile range. So in reality, I'm actually getting much, much less. 
And considering I live up in the Northeast, this is even further exacerbated by the really long winters that we often will have where temperatures can reach as low as zero degrees. And on average during those times, I get somewhere in the neighborhood of around 140 miles to a charge. Oh, and one other note, Teslas and other EVs, when they're generating heat in the winter time to turn on the air conditioner, uh, heated steering wheel, heated seats, actually use considerably more energy than it does in the summertime when they're generating cool air for the air conditioner. So that even further hampers and takes away from the range. All right, guys, just to show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. So I just took a quick drive up to my local micro center. And as you guys can see here, the temperature is around 21 degrees. It's pretty cold outside. I actually left the house with 75% battery and I'm down to 61%. So it's using about 14% of juice uh, to make this quick drive. Now, um, this drive was um, not too long. As you can see here on my energy meter, while it does say an average of 268, the projected is 165. So it used quite a bit of energy just to take a fairly quick drive and as you can see for the most part i was cruising except for one little spike there where i did uh, maybe go a little bit fast but other than that i was cruising and for the most part this hopefully demonstrates how much energy it's actually using to take a fairly short drive now, I know what you're probably thinking, friend, there's absolutely no way this is possible. You're probably accelerating too hard like a speed demon and not properly using the regenerative braking. And to that, I've got to say, yeah, that's partially true. But considering I'm coming from a much larger sport luxury SUV that's much, much heavier, and I was getting considerably better range somewhere in the neighborhood of around 350, even with my crazy driving habits, I've got to say it's a little bit disappointing. Now, while my situation might be a little bit unique, and if I took it a little bit easier on the accelerator, I'd probably get better range. No matter how you look at it, an EV vehicle is just not going to give you as much range as a traditional ICE. And that's something to think about because most EV owners and Tesla enthusiasts will always say about how much money they're saving at the gas pump by not gassing up their car, but they won't really talk about how much more extra electricity that they're using considering their vehicle doesn't get as much range. So that's it for my list of things that I dislike about this vehicle, but let me take a minute to share with you guys some of my final thoughts. So it's taken me a really long time to finish this video, somewhere in the neighborhood of around nine to 10 months. Now, obviously I wasn't recording the entire time. It was during my YouTube hiatus or whatever it might be. But the point I'm trying to make is it took me a really long time to make this video and I'm happy it did. Because my opinions about this vehicle from when I first started it at around 500 miles to now, which I just checked my phone, I'm at about 9,181 miles on this vehicle have drastically changed. So here we are 11 months later and everything that I've said in this video still very much so stands true. So there are a ton of things that I absolutely love about this vehicle, like sentry mode and the dash cam, and there are a ton of things that I hate. I mean, so much I didn't even mention because I just felt like they were petty, like the stupid windshield wiper just doesn't work, the stupid user interface that they just dropped on us in Christmas. There's just so much to dislike about this vehicle. I think it's all about how you look at it. If you approach it as if it's a piece of technology, which is the way I generally like to approach things, then I think the Tesla Model Y is an absolute marvel and a wonder. I think it's amazing what they're capable of doing with over the year updates and making changes. And of course, I just love all the tech and the gadgets and the companion application where you can actually look at your vehicle in sentry mode from remote and just all the really cool things you can actually do with it. It's just, it's a wonderful vehicle. But then if you look on the flip side of things and you look at a value proposition, just, you know, if you're spending your hard earned money, whether you lease it like I did or financed it or you pay for it in cash, it's a really hard pill to swallow considering what you can get for the equivalent amount of money looking at other options. Even if you wanted to stay in the EV space and you're willing to sacrifice on some of the styling and maybe even some of the technology features, there's much better options out there for you than what you're going to get out of the Tesla Model Y. And when I say that, I try to think to myself, am I just coming from a place of privilege where I've just had access to better vehicles? Or do I genuinely feel like Tesla is overpriced? And while the title of this video will probably remain reasons why I hate my Tesla, thoughts around hating my Tesla, things I hate about my Tesla, the reality of the situation is I don't necessarily hate the car, I just dislike it. But even though I dislike my Tesla Model Y, I do know that EVs are the future, so I'll continue to play in this space for the foreseeable future. Hopefully by the time the lease is up on this car, a Model S is within reach or possibly looking at some other brands. I'm also hoping by that time EV battery technology has improved with graphite and solid state batteries to give us longer range on these things because it's definitely needed. Road trips are absolutely brutal and a little bit scary at this point. So while I am going to end this video right here, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Are you an EV believer or do you believe all the Tesla hype or are you someone like me who's kind of in the middle and looking towards a more positive outcome? Uh, let me know down in the comment section below. Also, why you guys are down there, it's been a long time, but uh, if you like this video, 
video, hit the like button. If it's your first time to the channel, consider subscribing. Uh, yeah, once again, guys, my name is Fran. Thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you guys in my next one.